Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I'm going to show you how I made this diagonal fold card. Opens like that and it does stand up on the shelf as well. I'm going to change my colour scheme. Uh, the card stock that I've used for the base of the card on this one is Blushing Bride and I'm going to be using gran uh, Granny Apple Green. So to start off with I'm going to tell you the card pieces that you're going to need. Um, I haven't done um, metric measurements for this I'm afraid um, because of the diagonal bits I wasn't quite sure um, well, I wasn't confident, so I decided to leave it. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, to start off with, the first card, piece of cardstock you need is 8 inches by 11 and a half, which is almost an A4 sheet. It just needs a little bit trimmed off both sides, but this will be enough to make two cards. Um, just that bit's too, enough for two cards, not all of this. Then you will need for the inside of the card a piece of Whisper White which measures three and three quarter inches by five and a half inches. And then for the white layers on the front here, you need another piece the same size, which is three and three quarters by five and a half inches. And then you need some designer series paper, and I'm using Tropical Escape. 6x6, six six, 6 inches by 6 inches designer series paper. Um, I'm going to use two designs. Um, uh, this is going to be my bo the bottom one, this is going to be the top one. So both of these should measure 3.5 inches by 5 and a quarter inches. If you want the same de design top and bottom, obviously just one piece of this, but if you're going to do like me, two, two different designs then you've got enough here for two cards again. Then on top of that you will need some scraps of Whisper White. Now for this you need one for the scalloped circle at the back there, uh, oval, one for the scalloped oval there and for the die cuts on there and the stamping. And then you need two, oh no, scraps of granny apple green so that you've got enough for the oval underneath there and also the oval there. Right, so we're going to start off with making our card base. So I'm going to start with my scoreboard first. If you use your trimmer you, you go ahead with that and what you need to do is I'm just going to go over mine with some wax paper. My scoring tool has a bad habit of jumping the tracks. So on the vertical side you need to score at four inches. Turn it at 90 degrees and score at five and three quarter inches. Okay. Then you need to use your trimmer, so if you've scored with your trimmer, hold on to it. Now you will find, unless you take out your um, score bit, you're not going to have enough room to get this cut from end to end. Um, let me see if I can turn this sideways. Right, okay. Uh, what we need to do is to cut it from corner to corner and when we cut it the blade should go through the cross there. doesn't matter which way you do your cutting on this but you need to get that point let me get my paper piercer you need to get that point into the cutting track there and then once you're happy that that's there you've got to get that point into that cutting track. Okay, go back and check that one, make sure you've done that. In fact, I can come down a little bit further with that one. If you're like me, when you move one end, 
the other end moves as well. Okay, so once you're happy with that, right, that's it. Right, don't need that one. Push that out of the way. I recommend that when you start cutting and you're cutting onto a point I recommend that you start cutting up here somewhere and then go down to your point because you may find that as you push the blade up towards the point it will make it scrunch up it's far more likely to happen when you're doing it to um, DSP but it can also happen to cardstock too okay so I'm starting there now I'm going to go back down and now I'm going all the way through. Now that's not going to go all the way because that's in the way. Okay, you see that little bit there that I haven't cut. In fact, that one hasn't cut there either. So I'm just going to use my paper snips. Oh, that one's broken. That's left that looking a little bit tatty. Let's see if I can just tidy that up a bit. Yes, that's all right. And now I'm just going to cut this one as well. Okay, right, so that's all we need the trimmer for. Right, I'm going to fold my card. You see you've got the two folds there. But when I do it, I'm going to make sure that my point there goes to that point in the corner there before I use my bone folder on it. If it doesn't match up properly then you're going to find that as you're opening and closing your card they will bash against each other. Well not bash, I mean they're gentle. Um, <laughs> they will catch on each other. And then likewise with this one make sure that that lines up nicely too and then give it a good store a good score. If you find you get a bumpy bit where you've cut with your trimmer, just use your bone folder. It'll flatten it out beautifully. Okay, so you've got your card like this. There are four ways you could have this. Um, you can have it this way, because it will still stand up like that. You can have it this way and it will stand up like that. Or you can, no I don't want to do it on this one, let me show you this. I don't want that one to become too folded. Okay, so you do it like that, opens up that way. Or you can do it like that, so it opens up that way. Or you can fold it the other, now on that one it's this side bit is on the left hand going towards the right. But if you do it that way, it's on the right hand going towards the left. So you do have a choice and of course it would go that way as well. But I am going to stick with mine. In fact I did do it the wrong way didn't I? That's how I want my one. I'm just going to refold mine. Right and obviously this is the other one so you can make another card with that. So this is exactly the same as what you normally do with the sheet of cardstock. It is going to make uh, your normal two cards and these will go into a normal envelope. If I can just, oops, sorry about that. Um, let me just take one out of the drawer here. Okay, so it fits in there, plenty of room. So the first thing that I'm going to do, oh we haven't finished with the trimmer, let's bring that back. Let me turn this sideways again so you can see properly what I'm doing. Um, what we need is one of the pieces of Whisper White and both pieces of our designer series paper and on all three pieces we've got to cut it from corner to corner. Now I will do this one first because this is at the base. Um, 
what you need to do is to bear in mind that there's a right way and wrong way of doing this. If you're going to use the same top and bottom, then it doesn't it does matter actually, doesn't it? You have to pay attention to where you're doing your diagonal line because you've got the straight line across there. Okay, you need a diagonal line coming down here. If you put it down that way, that's not going to work. You'd have to fold your card the other way. So I need to slice from there to there. Okay, so just like before, line up the points into the cutting track and again like before start your cut midway on your paper and then come back to cut the rest of it okay so that's going to be fitting on there so if I was using top and bottom that would be fine but I want this one and what I need to do is again make sure that I'm cutting this way because it's going to be going on this top bit. I did this wrong on one of them and I had to turn the cardstock over to make it work but I didn't like the other side. It didn't go with the colour scheme that I was aiming for. Right so again I'm going to cut start my cutting in the middle and then come back up okay so that's those and then I need to do this one as well okay so that points in the cutting track that points in the cutting track yep right start off cutting in the middle and go back again okay so that I think should be the last of the trimmer so I want one each of these to go on here and I want one of these on here and one of these on here and that would do my other card in fact on my other card if I folded it like this I could do it the other way around if I wanted if I wanted to ring the changes right so today I am using Tombow to do all of my um, gluing just make sure it's unclogged we are still enjoying fabulous weather here in the UK. Long may it continue as far as I'm concerned. Right, so that's going to go on there. So I want the glue on this side. Uh, tweezers. I mean, this has got to be one of the easiest fancy fold cards ever. <clears throat> so that's going there, so I need glue on this side. That was another mistake I made when I was practicing making this. I put the glue on the wrong side. Last week I was watching a video 
find out how these cards were made and on Sunday it was my birthday and I was absolutely thrilled to receive a card like this from one of my Facebook friends it was absolutely stunning I loved it and um, that really motivated me to get on and try it myself there are lots of videos out there showing how to do this and I have to say some of them are a lot easier than others I think it really depends on what you're actually looking for there we go that's the front done now I'm going to put my other one on the inside that's it I left uh, quite a bit of an edge around here well I say quite a bit of an edge about a quarter of an inch of an edge all the way around I really think this is an absolutely beautiful green it really is superb so that's all of that so all I've got to do now is my stamping and the die cutting and then putting everything together so what I'm going to do is oh sorry the designer series paper is called tropical escape oh, I said that didn't I tropical escape which is six by six um, the happy birthday that's from picture perfect birthday that one there and the stamping is from tropical chic and I'm going to be using that and that and this comes with a set of dies which is um, tropical uh, thin lips so what I'm going to be using is that is going to cut the flowers out and there's two kinds of leaves that I want to do and that's those let me just show you the back of these and you can see what the other dies do you'll see there's a lot of powder on the back there because I've got glue all over the place I used to have, had to use my dust buddy but look at that, is that gorgeous and this is what I'm going to be using I'm going to die cut some like that and some like that and that's the actual flower and for the ovals for the scallops I'm using numbers one and five and for the stitched shape framelits ovals I'm using numbers one and four I always start counting my dies from the smallest so smaller the die smaller the number that's all that I need let's do some stamping first right all my flowers and everything I have already stamped and die cut but as always I will do one with you that's just die cutting so The flowers I'm using Blushing Bride. I think that's the smallest piece I have. There we go. And I will use Granny Apple Green for the leaves. And I'm going to do two of these. That's that one. Don't know where that came from. But I have my ceiling fan going because it is so beautifully warm. So anything can be flying in the air is that that and that and 
I will do that bit of stamping afterwards. And because I'm going to be stamping that onto the green, I'm going to be using shaded spruce because I don't think tone on tone will show very much. So let me just bring my big shot up. leftover from a previous project. I suppose I ought to do that one first, didn't I? Otherwise I've got to get it right in the centre, which is I don't likely that I'll be able to do. So let me stamp that one first. Now I can position the die on that correctly. There's no way I could have stamped that and got it straight yep, once I'd die cut this, the oval. Right, that's okay, that's okay. Right, those four are okay. I've forgotten to put my rings on. Naked hands. Not quite sure what I've done with them actually. I know they're in the house though. So. Right, now I'm going to do this die cutting. So first of all, the flower. This one's quite easy to work out because you've got the little st stamens, I think they are, standing up there. So that fits onto there quite nicely. I will tilt this to have a look at it in a minute. Now this one, I find that there's on here, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a bigger groove there and a bigger groove there and that's for those two there. Hold on, let me see. If you get the top one sorted out first and it, that fits the fourth one up on both sides and then just make sure you've got the stem in the right place as well okay so that's fine now this one is interesting it cuts off the stem which is a bit of a shame but it's okay if you put a flower over top of it but all of these you can see the little bits of green coming out of the pointy bits. I'm not sure that's a technical term, but I'm sure you know what I mean. Okay, so let's die cut that and see what we get. With 
this die cut I think it looks really um, very very 3D this is the only one that won't just pop out so I put my paper piercer in at an angle just give it a little bit of a press down last thing I want is to get some holes in it I don't know if this is going to show on camera but in real life that looks really really 3D as opposed to this one, this one looks very flat in fact maybe a little more 3D if I put the two together I'll be interested to see this on screen myself once I finish the video so there's those move those two Oh, oh no, not on that, down there. And then the flower. That just comes out really nice and easily. Right, pop that away. So now it's a question of just putting everything together. With these leaves, I did do three of each because I am tempted to use only those, that kind. But I thought I would uh, have a go at that on the video so that you can see. Right, so that's just going to go on as it is. So what I thought was to have these and have that one up on a dimensional and then have those, two of those down like that, that one on a dimensional and then that up on a dimensional. And I'm going to go for it. I'm going to give that a go. Come on, stop messing about. Oops. <laughs> As I say, the only thing I've got to make sure is that I actually make the flowers cover up where the, the stem is missing. Right, dimensionals. I think I'm only going to use one on here. Now regular size dimensionals is such a lovely size. I'll take two of these. Adhere these down. Don't put it upside down, whatever you do. Okay, let me have a look, see where I put these. I like the uh, idea of them coming off of the frame, coming over the frame like this. I haven't done it quite as well as I did the other one. In fact, I'm sticking that down, which I don't want. That's it. Let's get that back up, up and over. That's it. Much better. Now I'm going to put a dimensional on this one as well. Oops, one's enough. There 
we go. Similar, but not the same. But I think I prefer these. Let me give you a close-up look at those. The pink one's got two normal and one of the, what I call the 3D leaves. But this one's all 3D. So there we go, that's that. Um, this is going to have a couple of dimensionals on it. And I've decided to put my images on this side of the card because you can stick it whichever side you like. Um, my thinking on this was if I put it on this side it's got the weight to try and hold it down because it's from the top. Whether it makes any difference or not I really don't know. But what I did was I positioned it where I wanted it which is about there and then I just slid dimensionals underneath so that I knew that I wasn't going to go over the edge I think I put those closer together than I did on the other card because I didn't get four I love these colours that um, this set of designer series paper has been made in. The pink and the green is just gorgeous. Right now the happy birthday. There we go. So that's today's card very very easy to do the only thing you really need to pay attention to is how you're cutting your designer series paper um, but hopefully you remember how I explained it so that will help you um, remember how to do that but there we go is that lovely she says so modestly <laughs> many thanks for joining me today if you have any questions, please leave them in the box below the video. I'm always very happy to help you. I will leave all the product products that I've used and also all the measurements in the box below the video. If you'd like to purchase any of the products I featured here today, there'll also be a link to my 24-7 online stamping up shop in the box below. If you've enjoyed my video and would like to be notified each time I upload a new one, which is normally Wednesdays and Sundays, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you feel like giving me a thumbs up, that would be great. And it is at the moment July 2018 and Stamping Up are running two promotions at the moment. One is if you buy three sets of designer series paper and this is one of them um, you can choose a fourth set free um, all the details are on my blog at www.jambicards.com and another promotion is for people who for crafters who join stamping up as well as the £130 worth of products they can choose for their starter kit they can also choose one free set of um, 10 ink pads it's one of the uh, family colour groups um, but you could choose any one which means you'd finish up getting uh, products worth £193 in your starter kit which is absolutely amazing value um, and I'd love to have you join my team. So, oh, finally, during July 2018 as well, for everybody who shops in my online store and places an order for £70 or more, I will be sending them one of these, which is a cardstock, cardstock colour sample pack. 
um, because we've had a very big colour revamp this year there's quite a few new colours and this is aimed at helping you get used to the new colours to see what they're actually like before you buy they're all named um, and personally I find it a great tool um, so if you'd like one of these please go to my shop and place an order for £70 or more many thanks for joining me today until next time happy crafting cheerio